I, got, I don't use shot of lines, don't need them. <laughs> Cheeky, lad, good looking. Uh, eyes and teeth. There's something different, something exciting the whole way. Ignorance and arrogance. Confident, adventurous, and pff, I don't know. Amazing. Uh, my eyes. I'm definitely looking for love on Love Island. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Club Iron Podcast. Fuck it, that's loud, isn't it? Yeah, try again. Welcome back, everyone, to the Club Iron Podcast. Introducing Tom Powell. Now, Tom is a fitness instructor whose dream date would be going water skiing or paragliding with a girl who is not always looking at her phone. Now, there's one thing you must know about Tom. Tom does not need oh. chat up lines because, oh. well, he doesn't need, he doesn't use them because You're he doesn't need them. You're an absolute <laughs> asshole. Where did you find that? Uh, I'm quite resourceful like that. But for those of you who don't know that, that was uh, an introduction to Tom on 2016's Love Island series. And obviously, Tom, you were, you were on the series. Was that, was that your introduction? Yeah, apparently. <laughs> it was. Oh, you don't watch it. You I didn't try watch not it. to remember, to be honest yeah, with you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's funny. But uh, there's just a series of questions that I want to get in, into with first. Tom. Really? And these in are just the these, podcast. These are just quick fire questions, right? And I want to see your answer. I want to give you your answer to these questions from May 2016, and I want to have your answer to now. Uh, to, to now. Comparison. Oh shit. There we are. Question number one: How would your friends describe you? In May 20, 2016, you dis- you said they would describe you as a cheeky lad who was very good looking. So how would that compare to today? I said that. You did. I was a dead dog. <laughs> oh, my days. Um, I, hopefully caring, compassionate, and driven. That's a, that's a stark contrast. It's a very, yeah. Between 2016. I'm a very, very different person to who I was. Yeah, I, I, well, that's, that's six years ago. I keep forgetting that's a long time ago now, isn't it? Seven, yeah. seven years ago, maybe. Oh, seven. Yeah, seven. 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 It's a long Get time out. ago. Question number two. What's the first thing you notice in a partner? Now, in 2016, you said eyes and teeth. Why didn't you, wait, why didn't you tell him afterwards? Otherwise, he's going to use that as an anchor and he's going to think about it. Oh, okay. okay, yeah. So answer it first and uh, then you can say afterwards. I'm not going to lie. It's the same. Eyes and teeth. Eyes and teeth. I love, and I, I love nice eyes and I love nice teeth. Yeah. I do. I do. Oh, and, and a nice teeth. smile. I like, yeah, you are fantastic. I know. I'm thinking of getting them. I thought they were, re- they, they, they were fake, man. They're so good. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very so, jealous. Those so fucking you. retain. I know I'm jealous. I know he rinses me for putting team. my retainers in. Well. <laughs> yeah. Nah, because look at them. Big I know. Evil. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know. I'm Damn. just jealous because I got fucking terrible teeth. I'm going to sort them out. No, yeah. don't stress, brother. But I love teeth. I do. A nice size. Yeah. I'm a sucker. They're sucker attractive, nice isn't they? It's the first thing you see on a yeah, person. Yeah, that is yeah. true. And a nice little bunda. <laughs> I mean, you can't say no. <laughs> I'm not a boob man, I'm a butt man. Yeah, yeah. Through of course, of course. I love, love a good bum. Right, that's demonetized then. Anyway. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> right. The next question is what is your best first date? Well, what was the what was oh no, you said eyes and teeth. What's my what's my ideal first date or what is my first What's your best uh, ideal first date? Yeah, I think that was the You same. already you already ideal first that, date. Yeah. I have no idea. Probably something where we can just talk. Generally something where we can just talk. Somewhere cinema. quiet. I hate cinema. <laughs> I hate the cinema. I don't think I've ever been on a cinema date unless it's my girlfriend of a long time. Somehow we can chat, probably. Yeah, mm. just get to know cinema someone. Cinema date, I, I don't like, scenario, I don't like. I don't like speak to them. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I don't like wasting there. my time anymore. Mm. Like if we if we we go to the cinema, I don't get to know you mm. at all. I'm just watching a sick film or a really shit film. Which and then thinking, off. oh fuck yeah, there's someone with me. So the first yeah. date then will probably be a podcast episode together. Oh, outstanding <laughs> episode! I, I oh, what an idea! What an idea! Do a podcast. What, as your first day? As your first That's day. a good idea. I That's like that. That's a great idea. idea. I might use that for myself. Mate, actually. you should do that. <gasps> Club I'm not bringing women link. back here every, every Saturday night for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll set the podcast studio up, huh? Three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh, Club I and dating. But <laughs> Club so you, in 2016, you said that it would be something different and exciting throughout the whole the whole day. Oh, okay. Now, onto the big... Onto the, these, seems to be, these seems to be quite... Dating focus questions, but I guess it is Love Island. It was well, Love yeah. Island, yeah. <laughs> right then. What's your biggest turn off in a girl? Ego. Ego. Someone that has, has a big ego. Um, narcissism. And some rude people. That's not too far from your answer from 2016. You said ignorance and arrogance. Oh, that, nail on the head. Yeah. Arrogance, yeah. Arrogant yeah. women. 
Mm. Arrogant people. I don't like people that don't give everyone the time of day. Everyone mm. deserves. Yeah. You're very much that attention. kind of guy. I learned that on Thanks, Saturday because obviously a lot of people recognised you and you had time for everyone. Mm. So I think that's friendly. important. Everyone deserves your, t- your time of day. Everyone. Well, yeah, there's no one who's more worthy of your. Just because someone's time. got a bit of a following, it doesn't mean a thing, does it? It yeah. doesn't mean anything. To be fair, it's just numbers on a screen at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah. Just because. Mo- yeah, we, uh, I say in with sub a thousand followers. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't <laughs> no, matter. it doesn't. There's no difference between sub a thousand followers and my 230. It's nothing. Mm. Genuinely, it means nothing, boys. Yeah. So, but it's, it's half decent for business, but that doesn't make you a better person mm. at because, all. Because yeah. I think a lot of people get stuck up in that now. Yeah, I think that's the important it. thing. Massively. It doesn't make you a better person. It doesn't make you a more deserving person. At all. As a human being. As a, not, as a businessman, it's more beneficial. You'll be more successful. Well, not necessarily more successful. It, it you could generate you could generate more business than me. If yeah. we put the same thing out now, you're going to be able to get more leads from that. Luckily, yeah. Um, that's the only, that's but the, as, that's as the human benefit. beings, the, you know, the, there's no argument to say that you're any better than I am at all. Um, One thousand. You're a lot. You're a, a little bit older than me. I'm not going to say a lot older than me. You're a little bit older than I'm me. So you've had more experience. How old do you know? Twenty one. Yeah, I'm ten years older now. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I'm thirty one now, boys. Why are we always surprised that there were guests age? JD yeah, I, I knew that anyway because you told me. You told weekend, me on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did you? I didn't. Yeah, yeah. thirty one. Yeah, you were you were hammered on your first pint in months. <laughs> <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even finish it. Coffee lager. Oh, I loved it. So I got one more question for you now, and and, and that is, <coughs> oh, it was ignorance and arrogance. You said was your biggest uh, biggest turn off in a group. Yeah. So this final question is a bit of a two parter. So the, the question I, you. You originally asked us, what are you looking for on Love Island? And your answer was something lovey-dovey, I think. I think it was love or something. I don't know. I don't remember. So my question to you is, what are you looking for on the Club Iron podcast? <laughs> to have a good old chat with you two boys. Uh, and to get to know you two a little bit better. Yeah, because we for those of you, that, well, I say those of you who don't, who don't know, no one was there, so they wouldn't know. Uh, we spent all day with Tom on Saturday in Performex, listened to a lot of different... Mm. Inspirational people speak. Do you want to start on that then? We've Fantastic day, wasn't it? Was, it was, I, I, it was I, I love a laugh that day. I, I thought it was a good laugh. Personally, good laugh. it's the best fitness expo I've been to. Is it? I, I, I've never learned as much. I've never been inspired as much. Mm. Um, like I've worked the Arnold Sports Fests. I've worked Body Powers. I love yeah. them for what they were. But are they um, very exclusive or very, very so high end that you can't really get involved? They're just so busy. They're, so, they're so, so busy. People are queuing up for half an hour to see an athlete just to have a photo. Whereas I'm not like that. I don't want a photo with someone. It, that does nothing for me. Mm. I want to gain their knowledge. I want to know their experience in the industry. I want to gain something from it, not just a photo. And that's what Perform X did fantastically. Everyone had time to talk. Yeah, and learn it's on like those speeches walk, walk were fantastic. around and you know, Ollie match him and just be just he'd just be in his booth. Like it'd be, it wouldn't be a massive queue. You could just go up and chat to him. I like that a lot. The the fact that you know you're walking around and you just bump in a calorie stroke. You can have a chat with him. Yeah, and they would all stop and have a chat. And they would all stop yeah. and have a chat. Yeah, and did. I noticed that. I noticed that. I didn't find. I was walking around like, why? Why are there? Isn't you know? Why isn't it like very? Fancy I think it's because people trying to get pile in. Today, yeah, but reason. usually in in these like body power sort of expos, there's competitions going on. So everyone's busy. Everyone's looking to go somewhere. Everyone's on the way to compete or on the way from competing and mm. hasn't really got the time of day. Whereas this one there was no nothing like that everyone was just there for the people mm. i suppose yeah you you got competitions it's just a, as in like yeah. body power yeah, yeah your Callum, like when we stopped and had a chat with him usually he would have had competitors on stage and he's like oh sorry man i, I really i've got time to have a chat I, my, one of my competitors are on stage and i gotta be with them mm. that's usually what happens but because that wasn't there everyone was just there for us they were there for the pts the coaches to talk to everyone it was a socialization day it was a well, the whole point day. the whole point of it was to for yeah. networking and to teach to well to educate coaches and help them grow their businesses and that's what they were there for and i, I, I love that. that the vibe was really 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 good yeah um really really good i wish i went on friday now i, I wish i didn't i wish i got the opportunity to go on friday to yeah. do the both days yeah but to be yeah. fair i only really went for stephen bartler because i'm not an online coach I got so much value from other speakers, but I went for Stephen Bartlett because yeah. uh, he, if I was to pick one person that I would want to be similar to, you know, when I get more successful, it is Stephen Bartlett. I look up to him as a podcaster. You know, if I wanted to compare myself as a, you know, podcaster, that is somebody who I would That's aim the style to of be. podcast you want it to go It definitely into, yeah. is. And I when like I had that. my own podcast as a solo podcaster, because obviously he's on his own, that's the style, the lines of questioning that I followed. I wanted it to be like him. 
Yeah, you it's know, fantastic. And it was great seeing him. I mean, I remember seeing him. He just walk, walking out with his, like fifteen people. Around. Yeah, he was about it's just inspiration. Throwing socks at him. Yeah. Yeah. Please help my business. Hold my dog. Oh, <laughs> yeah, cute dog. Oh. Yeah, cute dog. I, I liked Ollie, Mar Ollie March and and um, fantastic George Eaton. I thought they were two yeah. exceptional individuals, and I think the the their talk was good as well. Because every person that we seen on that day, mm. I took a lot mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. like me you was writing loads of notes mm -hmm. and and you i can't i can't do... put it like that because if i I, I've le I learned this in uni if i start writing notes i stop listening because you can you can watch them back you can see the slideshows back i just put a couple of bullet points i write about 10 lines of the whole day just key words that i want yeah. to remember otherwise i've noticed this i'll end up zoning out and just reiterating what they're saying um if that's, that's your how, style that's of, how you learn bro yeah if that's your style yeah but that's that's not how i learn i end up just just copying and pasting yeah and, that's what i mean so you learn yeah. in a specific way just I, couple I of bullets have to write that because my memory's crap yeah these days. i've got so it much going on it depends what that's you need why to I take like from the, and i like to go down and explore this part of what i've written down mm. and then really expand on it and yeah the, the content they gave us i think was fantastic because that's what i was doing in the car on the way home i was just elaborating on the notes they already had mm. and i was just you know giving my understanding of them and my perception of them. And then applying it to your business. Yeah, and like there's a lot of things that Stephen Barter said, you know when you're saying about small details, like he put Israel Adesanya's, nip, uh, I think it was Nipsey Hustle one of Nipsey yeah. Hustle songs on. I was thinking like, that's that's amazing. Genius, it's genius. Like, you know, I try, I'm trying to emulate that with some of, some of my guests. You know, Well, you did with the Love Island question. Yeah, and pick out like little, Outstanding. little details in their lives. And, and, and See, that's application of knowledge. That's not just half and that's applying what you well, know. Well, that's it. Fantastic. What the fuck is knowledge if, if it's not applied? Neil Arms, 2020. And do you know what? I just, just to finish on the Performax thing, main takeaway, actually, and I've been guilty of, of thinking that I'm not good enough and that I don't know anything and that I'm not ready to be like the big dogs. But when you listen to them speak... All of them, they're all saying they feel similar. They don't feel like they've achieved everything. They still feel like an imposter in... in, so in it's called imposter industry. syndrome. You you never fully believe that you deserve this. Yeah, even and Stephen people, Bartlett. Mate, you know? honestly, God, it, it doesn't matter how successful you are, you always feel this. It, it's, it's a genuine imposter syndrome. That's what it's called. It's mm. a psychological... Yeah, I just thought it went away thing. after a certain point. Never, but never. It you, you always feel like, oh, I'm going to get caught out to be here. So they're going to find out that I'm not as good as I think I am. And, and that yeah. happens throughout the whole of life. And you've just got to have some self-belief because, brother, you will get there. It just takes time. It does. Everyone can get there. If you just got to be consistent and believe in yourself, man. Mm. It is. And you... I, great things happen when you believe in yourself. I know. Self-belief, obviously, it's a very beneficial skill, but it's quite a difficult one to achieve. Like so some, difficult. Some people, you know, even have their doubts today about themselves. And, you know, I, sometimes I get them. And I think it's perfectly normal. But I think the only way to sort of remove them is, like, action. You know, if, you, if you're if you constantly taking action on yourself, then you can sort of eliminate beliefs. Yes. Or, or lack of self-belief. Yes. Um, so, obviously, Perform X, there's a lot... I noticed this as well. There was a large emphasis. You know, we speak to a lot of bodybuilders and that, that sort of culture. And there was a large emphasis on, on coming away from that sort of training and, and... Well, it wasn't coming away from it. No, it but was... emphasising that more, the uh, what your body can do outside of the gym. Yeah. And, um, and obviously, Tom, you mentioned to us that you have... You know, you used to do like a bit of bodybuilding training. You know, you, you can tell on the Love Island show that you were into your bodybuilding. Your arms were fucking huge. Thanks, bro. The um, camera does add, add 10 pounds. I'm not, I'm not, not joking. There's got to be there's got to be muscle there to add on to, though. Thanks, bro. Um, so obviously, you know, why did you sort of come away from that? And, you know, the get it done lifestyle is, is seems to be a bit of a mentality for you. And, you know, it's, it's affected your training and how you live your life. So why have you shifted away from that and towards emphasizing on you know mobility and longevity like you said that's it longevity i want to be able to wipe my ass when i'm 60 <laughs> basically like yeah. i don't want to be this walking cloud that can't move that can't pick my kids up and carry them all day mm -hmm. I, I haven't got kids fyi but i do want them and i want grandkids and i want a family and i want a life where i can live properly like yeah. bodybuilding so restrictive you've got to eat this at this time you've got to go to the gym at this time you've got to spend x amount of sets and reps and you if you miss a session you've got to you can't miss a session you've got to get it done if you miss morning cardio and i didn't want to live like that i, I was I, I, there's so many negatives of it like for example uh four years ago i tore my pack off doing oh. doing bre do tra bodybuilding training and it was just part of parcel you know that's mm. what comes with it then i had guy you know and i had my nipples cut off that's just part of bodybuilding you know mm. and i realized that that's not what life should be no. I, those things were now normal in bodybuilding and they're not normal in life and I, I decided that I didn't want to live like that anymore I wanted to be healthy I wanted to be fit 
I wanted to last longer in life and I wanted to be able to live a better life for longer. Mm -hmm. Like doing the bodybuilding training that I was doing in 10 years, 15 years time, I wouldn't have been able to walk. Mm. You know, my, my, my knees would have given out. I, I was doing so much repetitive strain on like heavy squats or heavy leg pricks on all these things instead of movement, instead of prioritizing movement. Mm. I think movement is the key to longevity with resistance training. I do still do resistance training. I do full body splits every single day. I don't do push, pull, legs, etc. because I can't recover as well. So my full full training split is I, I do everything every day and conditioning and mobility, etc. Mm -hmm. So I feel better, I move better, and I feel a thousand times better without all that anxiety and stress from it. Yeah, because Ollie Marchand said this. He said the future of fitness is people seeing what their bodies can do outside of the gym. And is that obviously something that interests you? Massively. Um, me personally, yes. I love performance. I love seeing how fit and how strong and how well my body can do mm. under pressure. Coaching-wise, I don't coach elite athletes to get better at CrossFit, at functional fitness, etc. I do, um, but I'm more about the general population, helping normal people live better, healthier lives through resistance training, through mobility, through certain things like cold showers, um, certain supplements that aid you and help you live a better, longer life. Mm. That's my goal. Yeah. So where did that come from then? Or did you want to ask? No, go on. Midlife on, crisis at 30. That's what I, That's actually what I was going to ask you. <laughs> Midlife crisis at me. You're advice. 10 years older than us, right? Yeah. And I feel like I completely agree with you. I don't know if I'm in a position to agree with you because I haven't done something long enough to really feel, oh shit, this could take me down the wrong path. I'm still figuring out what style, because I was a power lifter until oh, yeah. recently. And that was putting so much stress on my knees that when I when I couldn't do a hack squat, we went to ultra flex. Yeah. I couldn't go past ninety on a hack squat without excruciating pain. See, and so I had to, I had to tell my coach, I'm like, sorry, Antoine, I've I've got to stop this. It's really messing me up, messing wow. me up badly. And now now I mean I'm now I've moved over a bodybuilding style, but I I I, I like the compound lifts and I, I what I feel like, and this is my point, I feel like I've still got this like sort of monster phase I want to get out of me when I get huge and I, I want to do that. Uh, it's not something I'm going to be able to to cycle for years. It's just something that I want to do mm. Mate, while I, I can. It. When I was your age, I loved it. That's and, what I mean. You know, you're you, at the age yeah. where you can recover, boys. Yeah. You are, so you wouldn't you're, discourage you're me from doing that at this not age. Not at all. I don't discourage anyone from from following their fitness journey. Each person has an individual journey. Mm. But just because mine is is functional fitness and movement. It'll come to a time in your life where maybe you will want to pr prioritize movement and mobility and things yeah. for longevity. But right now, boys, it's your fitness journey. You do what you want. Yeah. You find your own way. That's the, that. You, yeah. you never know. You could be in the next Jay Cutler. Yeah. You don't know because you might find that spark in the next year. Genuinely. Yeah. You, yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I mean, now that I've got a proper coach who's going to help me do it properly, as long as I stop fucking about with my life and listen to him. <laughs> then, then again, maybe you don't stop fucking about it with your life. You enjoy your man. That's but it, what but life he, is but that's but that's why that's what I think makes a good coach. But the sounds of it, this is what he's like. He's like, what we need to do is <clears> find a way for you to do what you're going to want to do anyway. And build a sustainable, healthy lifestyle around that. That's it. Yeah. Matthew doesn't want to drink ever. He's not interested. I do like a pint of the weekend. I do. I just do. No, that's the difference. And uh, he said, "Look, well, let, let's not, let's not, let's not tell you to get rid of that. When we do this photo shoot, I want a few weeks of of sobriety because yeah. otherwise, you're not going to be able to get dried out and get lean." Um, I'm probably not going to be paper thin by that point, but this is in, but um, you know what I mean. Like I, I'm going to have to sacrifice a short amount of time. Yeah. But over a long time, he's saying, "Well, you know, what life do you want to live? If you want to go for a pint of the weekend, or go out for the Six Nations, go out for the Six Nations." It's not changing your life to fit your training regime. It's fitting your training regime around yeah. your life, mm. and that's what I said. You shouldn't have to change your life totally to do it. Whereas that's why I, I wanted it because I did change my life for bodybuilding. Yeah, because yeah. that's what bodybuilding is, you know, bodybuilding it, is, yeah. is yes. consumptuous. It is your life. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and what to be a good one, to be a good one, it has to consume your life. Mm. And it, <clears> but what's the goal, though? What's the goal of that? The goal is to look a certain way. And I never had, so what I is never your had performance? a goal to win the Olympia. I never had, like, for years and years, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to compete, I'm going to compete. But I never had that urge to get on stage. I was just training for it, like it. For no real reason, to be honest with you, because that was the only style of training there was. So like a vanity-driven sort of thing. Though. Yeah, yeah. Like, obviously, from 16, I, I was in the Welsh squad rugby league, um, played seven years Welsh rugby league until I was 21, got dropped from the team. Yeah. And then I was like, instead of being a grown-up and being, right, I'm going to come back, because I brought Met Sarsal in my under-21s um, Welsh camp, and 
I couldn't run for six, and I couldn't walk for six weeks. So they put me through rehab because I was walking on the outside of my feet. And when I could run again, they dropped me. Obviously, I, I hadn't played in, you know, nine months. Mm. And instead of being a grown up and going back the next year, I was like, <laughs> see you later. Off, I'm yeah. going to Zante. Yeah. With the and boys. I, I had the summer, my, no, the boys went by myself. On your own? I did a season out there. As a rep? Or? Uh, yeah, working in a, in a bar and a nightclub called Linegas. Best experience of my life. Of my life, I recommend every single person to do a season abroad. Oh, it's mental. Oh, yeah. Changes you as a person, inspires you I as a person. Imagine. I can't oh, imagine. Yeah. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can't see. imagine you doing that, though. The way your personality is and how bubbly you are and how, how you speak to people, I can obviously imagine you doing that. Yeah, I loved it. I loved oh, it. I loved it. Being in the bar, yeah. talk to everyone all night long, you get drunk every night, which was obviously very, very different. I think I needed to get, get out of my system, mm. but I didn't. I did it for 10 fucking years. 10 years. I did four years just working there, managing the club then at the end. Well, then you were done, out there for 10 years? Well, yeah. I did three seasons normal, one managing a club, and then I went on Love Island, and then from that money I bought a club. And, we, and it's been there since, and I we lost it last year. Through but COVID. you owned a nightclub? Yeah. Yeah, it was called Indie Bar in Zante. Me and my business partner, Duncan. Mad. It was mad. I was there. I didn't, I yeah. didn't know that. I, 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 I only know it in this. Yeah, so through during, during the first COVID lockdown, um, obviously we needed to get there. So me and my business partners drove to Greece during COVID <laughs> lockdown, the pandemic. Me, Jake and Aaron, my two best mates, we drove through 14 countries. Shit. It took us 11 days, multiple fucking searches of my car, of us. Hmm. Uh, to get to Greece to open my nightclub, which was the worst season you we've well, ever you had. You opened this during COVID? No, it would open like two years prior. But obviously we needed to get there to open it for the season to, for people to get out there. Yeah, yeah. To, to try and make some money. Because the rent was 27,000 uh, euros a year, regardless if we opened it or not. So, what? so we had to try and get some of that money back. Mm. We didn't. We hardly got anything back, you know. We had to yeah, reinvest so a lot of money. Lot, so we really? lost a lot, a lot of money. And then it came to it. A couple of years later, or two years, just after COVID, they asked us for the rent up front, and I was like, we can't afford it. Mm. Like, up front? I don't know if we're going to make any money this year. Mm. I don't. And I can't I can't justify giving you £27,000, the euros, for I might make 5000 of it back. I couldn't do it. So, mm. yeah, we lost it. And, and to be fair, it was a godsend because I was killing myself out there. Mm. I, you say you don't drink. Oh, I was having 10 beers a day. Every night. Just to get, like, even if you walk into the club and there's a few people there, oh, go on, I'll get a beer and go over and chat to be a Yeah, every day. That's all not stream, isn't it? Being no, I wouldn't day. be able to do that every day. I'm a pussy when it comes to that. I mean, honestly, it's a One weekend lifestyle. and then I'm like, right, i got to call it a day now. I reckon one week out there and I'd, I'd, need, I'd need to recover. See you guys. Would you ever do something like that again then or would you just not bother? I wouldn't say that now, fits no. with your longevity. <laughs> you no, know what I mean? Not now. Not now. Yeah. I'd love to... I want to live abroad. I don't want to live in this country, but not a party lifestyle whatsoever. Mm. At that time in my life, it was perfect. And I, oh, I loved it. Mm. I have so many stories or lack of stories from lack of memories, but the best time of my life. Yeah. So how did, um, how did obviously Love Island come about then? Because uh, I'm, I'm interested to know about that because, you you know, it's obviously, it's obviously a very popular TV program and uh, people, our viewers definitely probably recognize you if they watch it. Um, so how did that even come about? How did you get from from uh, Port Talbot to Love Island? <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of a difference, isn't it? How does yeah. that even happen? They always pick people from small towns, don't they? There's never, like, famous people. Well, there was people. someone from Swansea on it last year. I, I didn't. I had never seen it. Yeah. I, I've never I, watched it. I've never watched I, it. I didn't I know you told. were on Love Island, to be honest. No, I don't I've watch met, it. Honestly, God, I've met a few people off Love Island. I'm like, hey, mate, what's your name? And they're like, Tom. I'm and I'm being offended that I don't know them. Mm. I'm like, so I just don't watch. I don't watch it. They, they they've got like a million followers. They've been on like seasons after me, and I have no idea who they are because mm. I just don't watch it. Um, I got on it through well Zante for one. I used to do personal security for celebs out in Zante. Oh, cool. So like, oh, there's, um, a, there's a network. So like, yeah, that. all the Jordy Show lot. So I knew a couple of the producers, and they messaged me saying, "We think you'd be great for the show. Mm. Um, will you fill out this application form for us, and we'll, and we'll be in contact." And within 20 minutes of me filling it out, they were on the phone saying, can you come to London tomorrow? They wanted you on. I was like, Shit. Well, I, I hope so. I'm, well, I'm assuming so. They knew. I think they know the type of person they want. Mm. So then I was in, I went to, they booked me a train the next day to London, did the interview. And by the time I was getting, so they, they book you a train, then you get an Uber from there to the offices, you film and then you come back. By the time I'd got back onto the train, so a 30 minute journey, they'd rang me and said, you're going on Love Island. 
it was that fast. So within three days, I, I think they went did you want in the second that they. I'm assuming, so, and it was quite late compared to It was just formalities, and they just yeah. said, right, just do all this shit down, and then we'll get you. I'm assuming so. So I did remember, you want to go on, or you were, were you like, oh, I might as well, you know? I, I an opportunity. honestly, I didn't know what Love Island was. Mm. I, did, I remember the Callum Best was in the Celebrity Love Island years and years ago, and like this guy called Brendan, I remember him. Um, probably before your time, boys. Probably. Um, no, but I, I loved it. Fifteen back then when you were on there. Okay. Oh, it was ten years before that as well. Oh. <laughs> Celebrity one was f- t- twenty years ago, maybe now. Oh, no, fifteen years ago now. And Carl and Best was on, and I remember that. And that's the only thing that I knew about it. So it was a completely different concept, sort of thing. And I went there, just thinking, oh yeah, well, I'm not gonna say no to an opportunity like this. Mm. And then they asked me in the interview like this. We were on camera filming. So, Tom, from last year, who was your main chick? Who did you fancy the most? And I was like, don't know. I don't Sorry, know, I, uh, I didn't watch it. Yeah. And they turned the cameras off immediately. I was like, oh, shit. I haven't got it now, obviously. And they got an iPad out, and they were like, right, these are the girls. Which one do you fancy? <laughs> remember, remember the name. So then they put, pressed it back on, recorded it. So I, I, I pretended like I'd watched it. And so I, I didn't have a clue. Obviously, I wanted to go on it, because at that age... Who doesn't want following? Who doesn't want a bit of fame? Mm. Yeah. Did you did you anticipate person. right? Fuck this, might get me some followers now. Followers, yeah, hundred percent, bit of money. I didn't expect it to blow up like it did because the first season wasn't as big as our season. It was the second season where it really blew up, and ever since then it's been killing it. Uh, but I didn't expect anything because I'd never watched it and I didn't know about it. Mm. I didn't know what to expect, which was good. I think that's why a lot of them in the villa had watched the season before, so sort of they knew the games. They knew what what was happening. That's probably interesting. Though. They were probably like, "Fuck, this is good because he's perfect, perfect fit, and he, he's not so into it. So he's just gonna kind of go with the flow and do what." Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. Like, Everyone else was like, "Oh, this person last year, blah blah blah." Uh, but yeah. then, just because I didn't apply doesn't mean that I did the best or anything. Like Nathan, the guy that won it, the funniest motherfucker that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> He smashed it. He applied for it. Mm. Like, he was like, oh, I love Love Island. I'm a, I'm a massive fan. I'm going to apply for it. And bossed it. Mm. He's the funniest guy I've ever met. So everyone start, starts from a different place. So where did place. you place then? How does it work, the place since? You get like 27th, a... I don't know. Um, I, fifth, technically. But I got voted out. Like, I was the first guy to walk in the villa in the little budgie smugglers. Thanks, Love Island. They made me wear them. Um, now I'd happily wear budgie smugglers. I fucking love them. Budgie so I, think, I think that might have started my my love of budgie smugglers. <laughs> we should have got them on for the podcast. Go chuck the them fuck on. Fuck hell! What with my I got a little white front on now, man. It's all I wear. Oh fuck! I you are gonna just get naked, and yeah, I came prepared. <laughs> but we're Welsh. You know we'll get naked anywhere. <laughs> happily, but oh, yeah, I loved it. The experience was absolutely mm. mad. Mm. Uh, I was the first guy to walk in the villa. They asked me questions, etc. I lasted five out of the six weeks. It was like a week before the final, I'd got voted out. Yeah. Because you had quite a, there was a bit of drama. I remember seeing a clip of, of you arguing with some bloke because he like went up to the girl. I don't know what Love Island, Island is. Oh, Adam, <laughs> yeah, I'd kicked off. Because obviously we don't know anything that's going outside the villa and things. And Adam, the guy that I had to go at, is probably one of the nicest blokes I've ever met in my is life. Is that real beef then in there? Was it? Or yeah. Or did they ask you to like? Uh, Mate, they don't ask you anything. So you, it really is, it's Real. not scripted then. But I was livid. I want to smash his head in. I swear to God. Because you don't really, everything's amplified in there. Mm. Everything's amplified in there. Like, do you know what I'm thinking? When you're having a date, right? If you start dating someone now, you maybe spend two hours with them tonight. You're going to see them again in three days time. And then you spend another two hours with them on another date, etc. Right? So that's in one week, you spend four hours with someone. Mm. I spent 24 hours with these people. So you for you develop feel, like a real feeling, feeling so like. much faster than, than any in any other situation. Mm. So you do you you think this person is, is so special and all these things and yeah. all like everything's amplified. So it's not it's not fake as in they us as blokes we are not inclined to talk about our feelings. Oh I wasn't back then, you know, no, more more I, now I, than I, I, ever we are more, but as as males we don't talk about how we feel and we don't open up, right? So the producers would come out and go like, "Oh Tom, do me a favor. Go over there with Terry." And talk about how last night went. Mm. That was it. They'd never go. So those little, say this. those little like, like secluded conversations. That they're I set see, up, but they're not set up. But the conversation isn't led then. Yeah, and the difference. I would have thought. I would have thought the producers would have been like, right, "Will you talk it. about this yeah. specifically, and then go there and do that?" They, they tell you not to talk about some things. Like if I if I'm singing, like I remember they told us off for singing a Chris Brown song. Me and Chris, me and um, Ray Card were singing a Chris Brown song, yeah. and they came out and told us off. Or like. A lot of people in the villa liked, you know, a bit of 
And that was talked about quite a lot. Mm. And every day the producers were like, right, guys, stop talking about this because we can't use any of this. What are you doing? So yeah, that would, that's, that's that would be me. I wouldn't even feature in there. <laughs> Honestly, so like there's, there's certain things you can't say. Or like if you swear in loads, you're not going to get airtime. But then you realize if you swear, you're not going to get airtime. So you don't swear, really. You can't, You do, but it's all authentic. Obviously, they, they manipulate situations. They know what's coming and they they know how to manipulate you. For example, um, me and Sophie had a little bit of a tiff when we were in there. Uh, Sophie was a bisexual, by the way. And me and her had a little bit of a tiff. They pulled Sophie to the side and was like, right, I think you should make Tom sleep downstairs tonight. <laughs> Knowing that tomorrow there was a vote on who would be the weakest couple. Obviously, I last night I slept downstairs. We look like a weak couple. Yeah, I got voted out. Who got voted into the villa the next day? Another bisexual female. Mm. They wanted the first same-sex couple on Love Island. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted to create that, that drama. They, that and they change. knew that that was going to come in. So mm. that's why they set things in place. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not angry at them for that. They, they they know what they needed to do to make good television. Mm. And, and we we signed up to any of this. Loads of people are like, oh, yeah, they manipulate you. But that's TV. But I'm isn't sorry. that what, what you sign up, up for? for? Do you sign up to find love? Or do you sign up to just... Like, you know that that's what it is. They're, they're going to fuck about with your emotions. Isn't that what the show is? How do you really think people go on there for love? Like, you I, were, I, though, I, apparently, in the questions you, that uh, they asked you. Yeah. Yeah, but you're going to answer them, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> you have to donate to sound genuine. Like, yeah. I think every single... You know, yeah, I just want a bit of I, cash, bro. I don't yeah, care about it. If I found love, fantastic. You know? That was that was, that was an added extra. If, if anyone on those shows find love great but i think everyone's goal is money mm. and fame really, here's it? a bit of a deep philosophical question then for you on the, on the state of love <laughs> do you think then obviously because on the whole purpose of love island is to find love so that means you're looking for love do you think it's possible to find love if you're looking for it uh yes uh, yes i do only because you're saying that i alex bowen and olivia i genuinely believe they're in love mm. and they they went on there looking for it i genuinely believe they will last Molly, forever. Molly, me and Tommy. Molly and Tom. I've never met Molly and Tommy, so I can't vouch for it, but I genuinely know it's, Alex and Olivia, yeah. and I genuinely full, and, and Nathan and Cara, mm. I fully, fully believe that they will last. Mm. Like, Alex is the best looking person I've ever seen in my fucking life. He's a handsome boy. Mm. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. he could have any bird in the world, generally, and he hasn't looked at another female in years. Mm. I, I know he's the most loyal person I've ever met. Mm. He, he's, he's genuinely. So I, I do believe that, yeah, you can find love if you're looking for it. So what was the biggest lesson then that that show taught you? I don't know if they taught me anything. About yourself or, or did you... Yeah, it taught me to be more confident because I had to. I was thrown in the deep end. I went from having 9,000 followers on Instagram to 150 odd thousand on Instagram. Mm. So and I was in the public eye. So it taught me to be myself, to be confident. Um, take every day as it comes. Because, mm. you, you know, being on TV, I can imagine, isn't a very, isn't a very small feat. And it's, just some... it's a big show as well. That's, that's what I'm th saying because they pick people... Um, and obviously you weren't a nobody. You had nine thousand followers. You had all this stuff going out in in Zante, but you know, I think a normal person. Yeah, but that's what I mean. They they just pick regular people. So like, how how does it feel? Because like? obviously, like, did you? Ha I assume you didn't have your phone and check in your Instagram while you were in there. You're not. You make, so you when don't you even know what time of day it is? That's what I mean. So when you leave, you see, fuck, I just had a hundred k followers. Like, what is? What's that like? I didn't. I, <laughs> funny story. Uh, so I I, I didn't know. About Love Island, I didn't know about social media. I didn't know about all these accounts, right? So now people, when if I'm going on Love Island now, I'll give you my phone to run my social media when I'm gone. Uh, I didn't know that back okay. then. To, 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 so people will, will will follow the account because it's still active, like friends posting on it. And, and yeah, this is the real account. I didn't do that because I didn't really have a clue. Mm. So I came out, like me and Leanne, I got voted out at the same time, another cup, another lady in a, in a crappy couple. So we both got voted out at the same time and we were like, oh, Lewis to the... the um, guy that was looking after us oh, Lou, do me a favor check our followings mm. just tell us because we still wasn't allowed our phone until another 24 hours later because we had to do all these press conferences so i said oh just give us a check liana had a look and she had like 60 odd k because she was in there for like a week i was like oh i've been in there five i'm bound to have you know a bit decent mm. and i had 20k <laughs> and i was like what the f has happened yeah. like, people hate me oh my god people hate me what the fuck like She's been in a week and she got 60,000 and I bought 20 and I, oh she my had, God. She had someone and, running and I had a, No, I just had a fucking panic attack. I was like, ah. Oh. 
there was a fake account of me pretending to be me with 300,000 followers. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah, but then they just didn't ever give me the account. Mm. So I, I lost those 300,000 followers. Mm. So I didn't, oh, I had yeah. to build, yeah. So then when I got up, obviously, this was my real account. People started following my real account and it shot up to like 150,000 in, in two or three weeks. Can you, how many followers do you think you'd have now if you had, if you'd thought about this? Oh, no idea. I probably would have pissed a lot of them off <laughs> since then. Because mm. I've, I've changed my, like they, they, people sign up to you or follow you to know what, what you're doing after Love Island. And I, I don't really yeah, stay in the You've come away from oh, that. So they would have unfollowed you because they would have been like, he, he hasn't, he hasn't followed on from Love Yeah, Island. he's not doing more TV work. He's not going to all these celebrity parties and things because I just didn't fancy it. I did, I did a few of them. Did a few more TV shows. Did a few more little, you know, guest appearances and things, but it wasn't me. So I sort of let, not left the circle. But I just didn't try to stay in a circle because mm, you see, you seem quite like a g really genuine person. I think that it takes a sort of personality to keep up with the whole like TV line. Yeah, but you've got to think of you know I probably would, even though I fucking hate it. Like I'd be the worst contestant on Love Island because I'm dry. I don't like people. <laughs> Man, that would be you'd be the best contestant. You're mad. I'd love to see that. Alex North for Love Island. I do. I can. I do have a tendency as part of Club Island, the YouTube, to put on this really arrogant bastard. So. <laughs> The persona. They probably like that though, on yeah. there, wouldn't they? I think if I got in shape, maybe, maybe, maybe I would. But I don't know. That's another thing about Love Island. They obviously put people with a certain body type and certain look into the villa, which <laughs> promotes bad, bad body image again. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah, big, big muscular guys, yeah. really good looking as well. Like, that's the thing. You Thanks, bruv. I appreciate that. Well, yeah. you, you no, in class shape, bro. Mate. The the men in Love Island are very, very, very good looking men. They don't they don't put ugly people in there. They don't. So that's the thing, see, it's all of a sudden, they, they don't, I mean, you know. No, yeah, okay. I so, so, so in other words, he thinks you're fit. I know, thanks yeah, you, I do. Yeah, of course I do. At least you're cheeky chat to blind hours. Yeah. I know, well, yeah. game's a game. <laughs> but I mean, I don't I don't really care about that. I mean, uh, you know, as a man, you've got to understand that you're not going on Love Island if you're not that attractive. I know no. it sounds a bit but Again, right, I, do you know when you said imposter syndrome? The whole time in there, I had imposter syndrome. I was like, I don't deserve You didn't to be feel a, like you were mate, good uh, looking. Mate, walking into that villa, in these little speedos and this shirt, I was like, oh my God, these girls are all going to look at me and laugh. They're all going to be like, what's it? Well, he's not good looking enough to be on you. The whole time, mm. every single day in the villa, even that, even... Did you chat to people in there about that? Did they think the same? No, you never, you never admit your downfalls like that in front of people. I was, I was too scared to say I anything agree, like that. Yeah. So you had to I put was, on yeah. a bit of a, bit of a Put on a show, you've got to pretend, like, fake confidence until you are confident. Mm. That's what, that's what I was doing. And I, and I, I all of them could have been feeling the exact same way as I did, mm. and we never talked about it. You know, I wonder if we should uh, we should re 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 engage in this conversation, find some of the contestants, and then but round up the cast, round up the cast yeah, of twenty sixteen. Yeah, boys, call it. Let's be honest. How do we really feel about all this? <laughs> it's five seven years later. Nobody gives a fuck now. They're all living their lives, isn't it? Yeah. yeah you touched on an interesting thing there about social media. Uh, you know, making you look a certain way. And we had a conversation on the weekend, and you asked us why do we want to be shredded. Yeah, sorry, I don't know why this is going on. It's all right. No worries. Yeah, go on, carry on. So you asked us why we want to be shredded, and I thought that was an interesting question. Because, uh, obviously, you know, there's a lot of, there's an agenda today with society with pushing, like, six-packs on people. And we had a, a recent podcast with Ethan Williams who was victimised by the whole six-pack sort of belief, and he even ended up going the wrong way. Yeah, he looked like shit because he was proper an anorexic. Anorexic. And he thought, I need to keep getting leaner, leaner, leaner. Um, and it just becomes unhealthy then. I think chasing a really shredded physique probably isn't the best thing to do. But at the same time, I want to get lean. I want to get lean because I want to look good. Mm. I will look better when I have a six-pack than I do now when I'm slightly overweight. It's just the truth. Uh, yes, but I think we 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 put on a pedestal six-packs. We put on a pedestal these people that are shredded and muscly for the wrong reason. Mm. We... We put so much emphasis on them. We we idolize them because they've got six packs because they look good. Whereas we shouldn't be doing them that because of that. We should be idolizing them because they are fit, because they are healthy, because they move better, because they are fit. They are, they are not. They haven't got any diseases. They haven't got any illnesses. They haven't got any injuries. Mm. That's why. Because having excess fat amount can cause health issues. That's yeah. why we should idolize these people because they are healthy, mm. not look good. Having a six pack means. Fuck all. Yeah. Fuck yeah. So all. don't chase the aesthetics, chase the health. I get right, that aesthetics is a big part of mental health. Mm. You look good so you feel good, right? Yeah. But not don't take it to the extreme. You don't need to be shredded to feel good. Because it, like I, you, you two have never competed. So when you get like dick skin shredded, 
you feel like death. You hate training. Can't eat any food. You're, you're on low calories right now and it's sometimes it's fucking hard. You, you don't have energy. And it's, it's more about feel, how you feel instead of how you look. Mm. And yeah, how you look does impact how you feel. But I think you should have that balance. We shouldn't put so much emphasis on six packs and being mm. dick skin shredded. Yeah, because that the irony there is that even though you might look good on the outside, Feel worse. if you're chasing... It's like that, isn't it? it comes down a, like hang that. on a minute. If, if you're chasing the aesthetics, you might be putting your body in a position where you're not you're not sustaining health. So you're, you know, reducing, you know, certain nutrients to, to cut weight, which is bad for you. You know, a lot of UFC fighters get kidney problems mm. when they're cutting water. So that's not for aesthetics, I know, but it's for the, the goal, the goal of being a certain weight, the goal of being a certain body type. Yeah. You know, maybe you can get, you can get lean and be healthy, but that's probably not going to be a quick thing. People want a quick six pack fix, don't they? 100%. That's probably the issue, isn't it? You have just hit the nail on the head there, brother. Well done. Well, it's okay. a quick fix. Yeah, we're chasing a quick fix as opposed to dieting do, hard. These yeah. these six week shreds, you know, trying to trying to get shredded in six weeks. You don't teach people good habits that they can last a lifetime with. Mm. I, I, my goal is to teach people how to live long term and how to live healthily, how to better themselves. Yes, having less body fat can be beneficial. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. I, mean, I know fat people that are healthier than bodybuilders. Yeah, well, one thousand yeah. percent. I think bodybuilding is so unhealthy, yeah. or can be so unhealthy. It's not yeah, everyone, especially when you're that. Well, I know being you know on gear as well. Like that's a, a slightly different conversation, but also it is the same conversation. They're they're putting stuff in their body that they know is enlarging yeah. their heart. They know it's damaging their their internal organs. They got to do blood work every day to make sure they're not going to die keel over a week from today. Yeah, I, was I know what it is. The, 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 it's the passion for bodybuilding and I'm not taking away from that. And I like bodybuilding and that's the route that I'm going to take. Probably not competitive. I still love bodybuilding. I still that's love the route that I'm going to take and I'm going to try and get huge. Um, but at the same time, feeling good. I told Claire when I started coaching them, feeling good and performance is number one and then yes. aesthetics underneath. I could, I would give up, a, I told him this, I'd give up a six pack for the rest of my life. I don't, I don't really care good. about that. And if you think about what women actually like, I think a healthy muscular physique without a six pack is probably better than this bone shredded piece of shit that doesn't like anyone. And again, um, it, it depends on what kind of woman you're talking to or what stage in your life. Hmm. Because generally at 21, girls do care about six packs. They do. At my at my age of 31, they don't so much. They care about who you are as a person, where you're going in life, your passions, mm. uh, yeah. how much you're caring. You know, that's that's the important thing. And you realize that as you get older. Yeah. So how does one achieve balance then? Because you were speaking about achieving balance. And that's, that's something that I wouldn't say I struggle with, but it's definitely an issue I have. I can't really find balance in things. For me, balance isn't about eating well sometimes, eating shit sometimes. It's about when you're training, you're going 100%. Mm -hmm. But when you're switched off, you, you switch off 100%. You don't worry about it. You you recover 100%. If you want to eat a pizza, allow yourself to have a pizza because that's downtime, that's off time. Mm -hmm. You know, finding that balance where you can be happy. Don't get me wrong, I'm not on about, oh yeah, go to the gym and half-ass it because 50% of the time you've got a good session, 50% you've got a shit session. I'm on about when you're there, 100%. Mm -hmm. But when you're out to there... I You're like that there. so much. So you commit yourself to what's right at that time. Yes. So like recovery, like it's not like work hard, play hard, but it's like work hard and recover hard. This is what um, George Heaton was saying. And oh, yeah. He was talking about, obviously, he's in really good shape. He runs a big successful business. Shredded. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Class. Fantastic shape. How does he do it? He said he does sauna, he spas, he does all of that. Every day. But he goes he goes four, like four or five days a week, he said he goes, does a sauna. So he obviously works very hard, clearly gets up very early, trains very hard. He doesn't half ass that so that he can not hurt his body. He just makes sure that when he's when he's focusing on the the recovery aspect, he does that a hundred percent as well. Yes. So it's not just fifty percent, it's a hundred percent on both aspects of the balance curve, you know? Yeah. Yeah, one hundred percent. Like, I if, like you go, that if you go on holiday, go on fucking holiday. Mm. Enjoy it. Yeah. Don't, Don't worry go on holiday with your meal prep. Yeah, yeah, like sometimes you need to enjoy a bit of life. 
Because mm. I think life passes you by fast sometimes. Tell me. You don't appreciate it. it like. Yeah, I know what old age math is <laughs> going by, you know. Boys, the next 10 years will fly by. Honestly. That's the thing I hear people say. Like, I hear people say that, but I can't imagine a scenario. Even at this does. point in my life, the older I'm getting, the quicker it's going, all of a sudden, you know, I'm nearly 22 and then I'll be 24. And then all of a sudden, I'd be like, shit, we still haven't become a millionaire. I thought I'd be a millionaire by 20. Everyone because does. you think you mm. so you think it's so far away. You you boys are a step ahead of the game. I'm not going to lie. You're very very well set up for your age. I'll give you that fuck. Like I thought you. I were am lucky boys. though because this this is this is resources that I have access to. Doesn't I'm matter. Mate, you 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 utilize those resources. Mm. Don't uh, d- you d- just because they're not yours. You're utilizing them. You're using them. Yeah. Well, the, I have an opportunity. I'm taking yeah. advantage of that. Fantastic. Yeah. And- it is nice, and it's, it's nice for you to say that. And you're always so positive. I don't know where it is. To, I don't know where you get <laughs> it's, it's it from. Because he's used to my negativity. That's nice. It's nice for one. No, but every time you, see, you, I, I've noticed you always see the the light in something, not the negative. That is true. You seem like a very zen person. I don't. Where's that come me. from? Um, I don't know. Because it's, it's I just it's love inspiring. life. I love people, and and I want to help people. I want I, because I was in a dark place as well. Like I, I've been to that negative place where i'd, I'd self loathing yeah and i hate other people for being successful because i wasn't i was jealous i've been that and person I, and i think yeah. we all have experienced it ourselves mm. and it doesn't get you anywhere in life no. and i i want like the best feeling i can i have is by helping other people feel good mm. i love it i absolutely love it so that i think that's where my positivity comes from is that why you're you obviously into your coaching and helping people yeah, I've always style. I've always been into fitness. Um, always, I loved it. Obviously, I was Welsh international when I was sixteen, mm. rugby league. Mm-hmm. So I've always been into fitness. But the, only the past couple of years, I've really loved helping, or, or I've realised and realised that I love helping people in any way, shape, or form. Mm. And this is the best way I can do it. Because you've done a lot of helping people. I mean, not only have you got your own coaching company, but you also had um, gyno surgery. Was it live? Yeah. Oh, it was recorded. No, it was live. You live, uh, live, live streamed. Yeah, I was completely. Eleven months ago, that was, wasn't it? Last it? was it last year? Yes, last summer. Yeah, last summer. Le- I think hardest it was, I think thing so. I've ever been through in my life. That was probably my midlife crisis, actually. So, what was that? What, what, what? How did that start then? How did you go from where, wherever you started to live streaming an operating table for an hour and a half? Uh, so I had guy for a while. It was. It wasn't really. It wasn't getting me down that much until you know just before the op um but i just struggled with it on and off for years mm. obviously i tried to control it my you boys know about testosterone and gear um was i was from, i was on was it from that yeah oh, okay oh 100 percent. 100 percent. um I, I never took steroids on love island before love island i was completely natural on on, on love island i was natural oh, i'd never taken anything um it was the year after i'd met my fitness idols uh i'm probably gonna oh fuck them uh, I met the Harrison twins. They they are clearly on. If they're li- if they're lying, the fuck them. I don't care. Mm. I'm, I'm open to everyone now. Everyone deserves to know the truth. And I asked them. I was like, boys, look, I really want to get into the fitness industry. I want to be a sponsored athlete like you. Oh, I, I had. I was. I just became a sponsored athlete by BPI, uh, who they were with. Okay. I went to train them, train with them, and I was like, boys, tell me the truth. Are you on? Are you on gear? And they were like, yeah. But like everyone in the fitness industry is. You can't compare. You can't compete if you're not really. No. So that was my, okay, I'm getting on gear. Got on gear. I did, uh, do you know who WADA is? The governing body for the Olympics. Yeah, WADA, yeah. So I did the... the open agency. Yes. Yeah. So I, I did the uh, course on steroids. So I, I was very clued up upon it. Um, so I didn't just, you know, do follow some coach that was telling me and I didn't understand. I, I knew exactly what I was putting in my body, et cetera. Um, and I was on a very minimal amount of testosterone and I just react bad. Basically. What, just test? I've taken I've taken test trend equipoise. I don't really, I, I don't really know what that is. Equipoise. Uh, it's a blood plasma volumizer. It allows you to carry more oxygenated blood around your body. So okay. MMA fighters take it. Oh, like EPO. Like uh, different drug. Yeah. So, th- but yes. Um, oh, if you could find EPO, bloody hell, you can't, can't get it in this country. Uh, but yeah, I, I've taken a multitude of things. But yes, I I wasn't. I react like you, you could take three times the amount that I took of testosterone and not get side effects. I was very, I was, I was taking minimal amounts and I got side effects. Mm. Um, but I still took it anyway because mm. I wanted, I didn't give a fuck, basically. So I was trying to, I was, yeah, views on I was trying to counteract it by taking 
anti-estrogens, etc. Yeah, so um, but it did, it did, probably yeah. balances off. Um, but then again, on trend, trends are different. It doesn't increase your estrogen; it increases prolactin. And if you're taking an anti-estrogen while on trend, it's just not going to do fuck all of you. Apparently, guy. you're supposed to take estrogen while you're on trend because that increases the effects. So uh, uh, again, that's theories. And pro- uh, prolactin, you can. Um, well, I haven't got a fucking clue, man. I don't. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, I want. This is what the sort of stuff that I'm hearing. This yeah, is you can. <laughs> no, you can. The boys. <laughs> yeah. The boys yeah, know I'm a lot more than I do. The, the you know the bodybuilders know. Mm. They are trying new things. They're running low dose tests, oh, and high dose trend, etc. Yeah, of course they are, because that's what they do. Um, but I had guy you know quite easily from it, and it was painful more than looks wise if you saw it it wasn't that bad it was in my head more than anything but it was painful as i was laying on a bench to do like a row mm. it would dig in i was like oh my god that's oh. that's uncomfortable mm. so i got in car i asked a few different companies about about things and um they were like oh if you're willing to talk about it we'll do it for free and i was like do you know what i want to talk about it i, I do like because at this point in my life i was like yeah i want to be open about everything i'd stop doing any paid promotions on my instagram of fake stuff like i did forex trading sort of thing <laughs> people would give me fucking 50 quid and be like oh yeah chuck this up in your story for the forex trading but i never traded with them in my life you know that's the, the sc- scary the different thing because obviously you come i've seen companies i guess before and they go bust and everyone loses their money really quickly yeah, it's yeah. Hard so i'd stopped to be even yeah involved. so i'd stopped i totally stopped and I, and I was trying to be me i was trying to be honest and genuine so I was like, yes, let's 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 go live. Mm. Let's let's be totally honest about it. So I did, and it was the hardest time in my life. Hardest time in my life. What the post surgery or post surgery? The, 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 the surgery was fine. Yeah, I was like, you could feel it. Like, and they got they literally open your nipple up and go inside you with a drip. Oh, it was, it was a weird feeling. Yeah, but it didn't hurt. It wasn't painful. I I like I, I'd go through with the pain again. Yeah. Like it wasn't painful. It was psychological afterwards. I like I had an infection in it. Um, so one of my boobs was out here. I had to wear a bra for like a month. Uh, I couldn't, like, I love training. I love fitness. I love, it doesn't matter what it is. If you tell me to go on a 10K run now, yeah, let's do it. Let's climb a mountain. Yeah, let's do it. Anything like that, right? I love it. Yeah. And I couldn't do anything. I had to lie in my bed for two weeks, contemplating everything, every decision I've ever made. And it was tough. It was really tough. Is that, so, that's obviously the source of it then? The, the change. Inactivity. That was, yeah, 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 inactivity. It, it, it ruined me. I can imagine that being hard because when I have a rest day, I feel a bit lost. Yeah, try now in like three I months. Love it. Well, you have a rest day. <laughs> I'm a lazy, but I'm not lazy, but I like I'll I'll, I'll sit around and I can't recover. I can't do it either. I love being active. I love going places, doing things, meeting people. Yeah, yeah same you, actually. Yeah. You're up really early, getting steps in a lot, and that's like me. Yeah, like you, you just love and you love getting up and straight away. Let's do something. Yeah, I'm exactly it, like you. Well, it's like I, I think you should just start off your day by creating momentum with physical movement in your body, and I think that it transpires then to the rest of your day. Outstanding you know? way to think that is. And it's like now we're doing a podcast. That's what I do. I do my session at six a.m. every day. Yeah. Do you? You know? Yeah, my training session. I didn't know. Huh? I train at six a.m. every day. <laughs> I take the piss, Sal. Oh. I'm just I'm, I'm echoing your point, and you're just shutting me down. <laughs> oh, I'm only joking. But it's you, only banter, boys. In there, but you no, mentioned. No, we don't do banter, on you. I'm cutting you up to this whole podcast. <laughs> just me and you, bro. Yeah, but you mentioned how you're going to do it, and I'm I'm just addressing Tom Street. Well, I will have to be able to contact them when I. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, guys, this isn't going to make any sense. Tom Powell, no context. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, you mentioned there that you you stopped doing like pay promotion and. And uh, and that, that was that like a bit of a turning point then in in your life because like a lot of people are fixated on social media you know they're fixated on becoming an influencer and obviously being a person of influence like you were you know oh, you've just stole my line I'm not an influencer I'm a person of influence that, that was, was one of the lines, on the weekend that was one of the lines of my before <laughs> yeah, but no where was the turning point then that you wanted to sort of give up you know like the whole influencer life sort of promoting products and 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 lighting to people because. I, str- I struggle to believe that influencers are honest all of the time. No, they're not. I think 1, that there's a lot of them who lie. Yeah, they're, they're, they're honest about liking money. And I've called people out, don't I? Mm. Uh, I never, like, I'll have, hold my head up high and say I've never promoted absolute bullshit. Mm. I haven't. I've never promoted supplements I don't use. I've Like, like BCAs. I, I've never promoted them. I've never promoted... <sighs> Herbal life when I, I could have capitalized on herbal life and made herbal thousands, life. you know. Yeah. Some some people off I can't think it was Holly off Geordie Shore made so much money on off it and then got called out for it. Mm. I I never did stupid crap like that. Yeah, I did pay posts for clothing brands that I wasn't really wearing, mm. but that's not lying to people, no. you know, really. Um I did 
forex trading one and a betting one saying that i was trading with these guys and i was betting with these guys which was lies i didn't i'd never did it it was absolute bullshit um and it was for money they'd offer me 700 pound for three posts it's quite hard to say no to a decent bit of money like that yeah so and at the time you just because you think you've been on love island you think that you've got money absolute bullshit mm. like i was living month to month after time like don't get me wrong I, the first year after love island i made peas um and as long as you capitalize on it, you can. But then you can get, I could get £3,000 a week mm. from these paid posts. It's hard to say no to. Mm, Genuinely know. hard to say no to. So I, when when I got a bit of capital behind me and I was like, money's not everything. Mm. Being who I am is, is more important than having a bit of extra cash in pocket. And then I realized this is bullshit. So now I don't promote a single thing that I don't use, that I don't believe in. Like, mm. uh, on the weekend when we went there, the I Greens. spoke to this, yeah, Greens, Nutrify. Yeah. I knew he was there because I wanted to meet him and I wanted to speak to him because I take Greens mm. all the time. And then afterwards, I was like, mate, I'd love to work with you. Like, I, I, I genuinely take Greens every day so that I'd love to be involved with the Greens company. That is actually a good company. Because it lies, it it lies the nicest taste, taste, taste amazing. Greens. Outstanding. Oh, Shout out to Nutrify. If they want to send anything to us, I mean, yeah, if you, you wanna... could feel free. I mean, yeah, Tom, could work, Tom could work his magic, but... <laughs> I think that I think there are some things worth more than money, like you said. I think that's such a good moral compass to have. I, I'm trying. I'm very much trying. Because hmm. it's it's interesting. I mean, you know, people see like the whole like blase of like television, and they assume that you're one, you're you're a certain type of individual. But then you're a complete stark contrast to to what I think people perceive of you. I think everyone perceives me because I look a certain way and I've been on TV. Mm. I, 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 people judge me before they met me 100% mm. I, I just want to be me mm. I just like, want to be truthful and honest and genuinely I just want to live like I want to live and I want to mm. I want to lie because I love this persona I, 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 it's, 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 it's got an attractive aura around it being around you I don't know where it is do you think people take advantage of your positivity no do you think people see you as somebody who genuinely wants to help and try to take advantage of that I don't know. Because it's possible that that could be the case. When you see someone who's just genuinely, not that they think you're naive or anything, you're obviously not, but somebody who's super positive all the time and think, oh, maybe I can get something out of him. Mm. Then get something out of me. You're never going to take my positivity away from me. Mm. You're never going to take me away from me. So if you want something out of me, then you take it. I, I'm always giving, always. You can take what you need to Im improve your life from me, genuinely. Because I'm at that, I'm so confident and I'm so happy within myself. Like I'm head over heels in love. I'm so confident in business. I I'm so, I feel like myself for the first time, not the first time in a long time, but for the last couple of years, I genuinely feel like I'm me and I can believe in myself. Mm. And no one's going to take anything. So if someone needs to be negative around me and draw a little bit of my energy, let them do it because then they're going to draw a little bit of my positivity and their life might be a bit better for a couple of days from mm. that. Because I, 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 that's something I aspire to be like, you know, um, completely comfortable within myself. Because obviously I'm not right now. Um, I don't think no, anyone no, can. I don't think anyone can be without work. You no, know, it's taken a, a long time, and it's taken a lot of self, self. It's taken a lot of mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, <laughs> nah, joking. I'm not joking. It's not a lot of mushrooms, but I have taken mushrooms, and I have been on. Well, or like closed cap mushrooms, or like portobello mushrooms. Shiitake mushrooms. mushrooms. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, we've got plenty in the house, probably, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've got some baby mushrooms. But I was going to ask you, what, what sort of steps could someone take then to sort of be like you and be as good as and a po as positive as you? Well, it's not just I positive, it because I think your positivity comes from self-awareness by the sounds of it. Your positivity and your ability to remain positive around negativity comes from a happiness within yourself and a contentment in your own life. So, like, how would you get to that point, as Matthew's saying? How do you build that? Because at the moment, I'm not even sure who I am. Yeah. That, so, like, how can I be positive it. if I'm if I don't even know? Live, live. Just that's it. Live. Experi foot, experience. Yeah. You learn as you go, man. Like, you're not supposed to figure everything out by the time you're 21. I haven't got everything figured out. I'm 31. Yeah. I haven't got a fucking. You're young. Thing. You're not. I have exactly a clue like... where I'm going in life. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the beauty of it. Enjoying it, knowing that your life is one way around and you <laughs> affect your life more than anybody else mm. you're in control of your future you're in control of your happiness absolutely it's all down to you mm. and it was at that point i was like i'm i choose to be happy i choose to be this person yeah because that's the thing see there's obviously a lot of pressure on people in society you know to be like millionaires by 21 
Yes, there is you massively. Know, I, I, it's, I, it's, it's, it is it is now it is hard. Yeah, I, I feel sorry for people growing up in this day it's and age. It's really mm-hmm. hard for me because I'm because I'm like I, I'm hearing like. You know, obviously, we're quite aware of like businesses and stuff like that. We're always talking about the importance. I spend a of lot. I spend hours every day watching young people, you know, explain their story, how to get rich. It's 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 not all I care about, but it is one of my primary goals right now is to build financial wealth. Not for me. I could work in Asda for the next thirty years for my family. I want them to retire as soon mm. as possible. Mate, honestly, that's, that's why all I'm I care about. So right now. I want to pay my mother's mortgage off. Yeah, same. That's and literally like all that matters right 100%. now. One hundred percent. It's it's just like. I think everyone's expected to have it figured out by twenty one now, or yes. twenty, or nineteen, or sixteen. Or I know. 18. There are people who said how to get how to get how to become a millionaire in your teens, and I'm like, fucking hell, I'm not even in my teens, but I'm still young. I'm like, I am I am I too old for rich? Yeah. Stuff? Don't worry about that. There's there's loads of ways to get really rich quick now, and, and I think because these nineteen, twenty, twenty one year olds that have got rich really quick. They're in the public eye. That's all you see. But you're forgetting that there's hundreds of millions of other people. The hundreds of millions that are, and, that are doing it slowly, that are doing it by 35, 40, 50. Yes. And, and I think they're happier because they, they, mm. they've they worked for it. Some of these like people that have... Yeah, they're rich before overnight. they've learned themselves. So that, 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 that eventually... You hear stories of people saying, I don't even know who I am anymore. You know, I've, I've, I've become this... What's person. the point? What's the point in in financial substance without any personal substance? Mm. But I want I just want cash because I want to <laughs> give it to my parents. Yeah. I, as I said, I'd work it. I honestly, if you said you can have a million quid now or two million quid, and your parents can do whatever they want for the rest of their lives, but you have to work in Asda sixty hours a week for the next ten years, done. Here's the thing, Phil. I can guarantee you that they would much rather spend time with you than you give them. I know, and that's why it's an awkward that's thing what for me now. Like. Because my mother's like, I don't really, I don't, I don't care. Because I was like, oh, I'm gonna make you rich, mom. She's like, I don't care. She wants, I just want you to be happy, and I don't want you to stress too much over this. Yep. But I, I refuse to. I don't know. It's, it's a hard dynamic because every, especially young men, right? We feel like we want to start being providers. I think yes. I'm at that age now where my mother's given me a lot. She's still giving me. Both of my parents are like we're sat here in the studio that was that was paid for. By my father, a lot of the kit that we're using is is me and Matthew. But you know, I'm still partially dependent. But I I, I think if I want to become happy, going back to what you were saying, become really happy in myself, I want to be the one that you know makes the wheels spin, makes my parents happy, makes them financially secure. I want to be that guy now. I don't want to mm. be the guy saying, "Oh, man, please, I I I know you know I said I was going to make money this month. I'm struggling a bit. Can I borrow hundred quid?" I, I, that doesn't make me feel good. And that that it makes it me come. feel like, how can I be a f- well-rounded person if I'm still dependent on my mother? It will come. Do you know what Generally I mean? Generally, it yeah. will come, and then you can pay her back in all different kinds. She is your mother. She loves you unconditionally. Yeah. My mom's one of my best mates, genuinely. Yeah. I, I can. I don't need to you know, worry about my, my money with my mom. I can just go... For, we, we'll go for a walk and talk for two hours. I, like, I live in Leeds now. My mother's still in South Wales. I probably speak to my mother on the phone uh, six out of seven days a week. Mm. Really? Yeah, and I mean, I don't mean a five-minute conversation. I'm on. I, I speak to my mother an hour a day, mm. every day. I used to do weekly calls. My mother, when I was in uni, as I lived in London, we do like a two-hour FaceTime once a week. Yeah, um, because I was a bit shit like that. No, when you're young, I, I was like, I, I'd go to Zante and not speak to my mother for three weeks at a time. Yeah, She'd think I was dead. Yeah, my mother usually <laughs> she'd usually text me like, "Are you still alive?" Yeah, <laughs> but that's not you're you're young and you're living. Now yeah, I'm older. Yeah. I, I know that you know my mother has dedicated her life to me. She would give everything for me, and I would give everything for her. Mm. And that's that was a part of it. She's the most important person apart from Danny, my girlfriend. Those two are the most important people in my life, and they, I will give them fucking everything. Mm. That's the thing about mothers. They they they're like always in your heart. Like I'm the guy with my mother, and I've, I've got such a con- a connection with my mum. It's unreal. Yeah, and it's, it's 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 I don't know. You can't replicate that in life. And I think that you've got to go through life and experience the journey. And obviously, money. I think money comes. Mm. But me yeah. and Matthew now going back to sort of the earlier point. I think we're trying to rush it. Get rich this year. Get a G wagon by Christmas instead of enjoying the, the, folk, enjoy the, the journey. The folk, yeah, but we're not because I'm I'm giving Matthew hell. I'm like you haven't done this on time, and he's like. Well, this is becoming really miserable for both of us. So slow down I'm, and enjoy the journey, man. That's the whole thing. Yeah. I work with my best mate, right? We're not making peas right now. We're not making, we're not killing it. But mm. you know what we are? Fucking happy. 
Mm. Because we spend every day together making content that we yeah. love. And when I'm making peas, am I both miserable? So it's like, what's the fucking point? If you're not if you're not enjoying it and you're not making money and you're not learning, then why are we doing it? I think it's important to enjoy. I mean, yeah. we it's, the mind, it's the mindset at the moment. We like, get rich quick or, or, or nothing. We've literally got a podcast where we speak to people who we find interesting. People yeah. like yourself, you know, and we and I'm thinking, I'm like, well, I'd rather enjoy the podcast and actually have a great time than think, how can we get a million subscribers in a year? Because it's like, but I, but I still find I find I find joy in that. But what I what what the struggle is, is when what my, my what I try something, I'm like, well, let's try this, and it doesn't work. Or I put six hours into an edit, and it doesn't work. I know it's like be patient and just enjoy the process. But I'm like, no, now what I need to do now, I need to learn more, more, more. I'm very much. In a, I think you just destroy yourself like yeah, that. I'm, I'm very I'm much failing. binary. I take emotions out of it because I'm a very emotional person. I am a very sensitive person. I do cry from time to time. I do. I do get, you know, in tune with my emotions, yeah, but I, I cut it out when it comes to business. Mm. And I think as I'm like a... I'm a trip. Well, you don't because you get emotional and you get angry and you're not enjoying it. Yeah, but what I, the, th- the sort of things that I try and do, like I, I'm a, a trader, I'm not a trader, but I do I do that. I studied there, I've done an internship and that. And you can't, you can't bring emotions into no, it. Can't. I'm doing what do you things. Mean a trader, sorry? Like Forex and stuff like that. Oh, I do okay, that, yeah, yeah. like sorry, a I bit of that. Um, and I, you, when you're doing stuff like that, you can't bring emotion into it. So I'm, I'm going down these avenues and looking at numbers and trying to grow. Mate, you say that, right? I lost 19 grand in a day and I shit my pants. Yeah, I've lost, I cried I've for lost, days. I've lost money, you know. Oh my days. Not that, not that much. I have uh, not that much, but um, it's, yeah, but what, you know, what I'm saying is I'm, I'm doing things. I'm focusing on analytics and stuff like that. When really uh, what I want to do, I want to bring out my creative self. Um, so what is what's happening is I'm shelving all my That's emotions, thinking, "Oh, let's just get money." I'm binary. I'm like, "Money, no money." Right? Let's chase that. But it's 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 dragging me down, and, and as a result of that, dragging you down because I'm bringing you down with me. And I'm an right incredibly down. positive person. I try yeah, to be. yeah. You know, I try to I try to just stay positive and enjoy everything. Like mm. I, I try to find enjoyment in everything I do, and I think that, yeah. I think forcing something. Or forcing an I'm, I'm forcing a life it. for myself yeah, that I don't enjoy, and that's bringing both of us down. It's you know? it's pr- it's definitely because of the whole like TikTok sort of culture and hustle culture. And yeah. stuff hustle like culture. That. I'm thinking I I need to speed up, or I'm going to be left in the dust. You know, and it, it's not it's not healthy. I'm stressful. I'm stressed every minute of every day. You know, and I I don't think I deserve that. I think I'm very hard on myself. I don't give my, I don't cut myself any slack. Yeah. That's probably not a way to become positive, really, is it? Become happy, become self aware. I'm just bringing myself down every day i'm like i i uh, i haven't worked hard enough you you, you need Do you to know what I, tell, I tell matthew i'm like you're, you're five minutes late you know you could have done loads in that five minutes i'm so oh. down to the wire oh, okay it's 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 it's, it's actually, opposite to me i'm gonna be honest it can be difficult to be around me sometimes Incredibly. because of how how like right we've got to get this done come on let's go let's, let's yeah. get this done you know it's like when when matthew said someone's gonna be there. how long exactly eight minutes nine minutes like, I not know. that I, not that i'm annoyed but i'm like very much i want to know what's going on precise. exactly precise yeah, yeah. I mean, that there's room you need to figure out how that works for you though mm. and and learn that's a good thing to have trust mm. me that is a good thing because i'm shit with time in mm. i'm on my business partner is but that's why we yes. work good together we yeah we're just lax days we're like polar it, opposites me and matthew it? Well, not really, but he like he he doesn't do any of the technical stuff. Was I'll build systems to do lists, this and that. Yeah, yeah. And Matthew will just apply his creativity to yes. that to try and use it. So we we are a good team, but at the same time, and Jay was saying this yesterday in the podcast. I think where where instead of finding a middle ground, we're just butting heads all the time. Yeah, I'm like, why can't you do this? And you're like, why aren't you allowing me to? do this? I think this? you need to let each other be each other. As in, don't get angry for him being that. Don't get angry for him being. It's more me. Don't. Uh, Matthew's let... actually quite good. <laughs> it is <laughs> just gotta <laughs> let, let let him be late and let him be the creative bit. You know that he's gonna be late. So don't let it stress you. <laughs> I'm not late though, often. No, but it's it's it's, no, the, you know it's I mean, the main that, yeah. idea, the general idea. Yeah, I shouldn't really talk about us too much because this is obviously this is your your Brother, your it's, podcast. It's, it's like your account, podcast as well. It's like a counselling session. <laughs> well, I think it's Tom. interesting because at the end of the day, there are going to be young people out there who are going to feel like me. There 100%. are going to be young people out there who feel 100%. like Matthew. There is no stupid question. There is no stupid statement. What you're saying, someone else will relate to 1,000% yeah. and you will be helping someone else right now. Mm. So don't worry about opening up and, and being true because I bet you you're helping someone right now. Yeah, there's going to be a, you know, a, a poor young entrepreneur um, similar to Matthew who has, Boy, to, de- who has from, to deal with the narcissism of... <laughs> honestly, from the outside looking in, you two look like the most professional people in the world. You look like you could have a million followers, genuinely. I just think I've got so crippling you, imposter syndrome. You have. Everyone has. Yeah. Everyone has. 
That's I've still got to this day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mate, I bet Alex Bowen added on Love Island. You know, I bet everyone gets it. Yeah. It's not just you, brother. Trust I just, I, I normally just appreciate the fact that I'm in this situation to feel like an imposter. Yeah. I think that if you're not in a situation where you don't feel like an imposter, if you can you're avoid imposter anything. syndrome, but that just creates complete. Would you have imposter syndrome? Would you have imposter syndrome if you were still working in Asda? No, I felt like a god. <laughs> What's the point? Which, which is which is also bad, but at the same time, I felt like I'm I'm built for better things. I didn't feel like an imposter. Well, I did, but on the other way, I felt like I shouldn't be here. I'm not fulfilling my potential here. Yeah. It's still imposter syndrome, but it's not in the way that most people do feel it. Like I was invited to do a talk at a, an event in uni, and I was like, "Bro, I can't do it. I don't want to do it. Why? Why would you ask me to do that?" I thought you must be scraping the bottom of the bar or asking me. <laughs> Somebody must have pulled out, and he's like, "No, I genuinely want you to come and speak. See, talk it, about the podcast." That's, that's self belief. Mm. You need to have self belief, brother, because other people see you like this, and you're you see yourself like this. You should see yourself as the highest. You should regard yourself as this at all times, man, because then mm. you're gonna elevate yourself. But if you if you think that you're down here, this is where you're I'm gonna putting stay. a cap on my. On that's my, right. That's on my right. That's what I try to say. Yeah. It's, 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 you help me with that because you have a, you have like a an endless vision it kind of keeps going forever you're think, thinking oh we'll we'll talk to jay cutler next year and i'm like yeah even even uh george osborne i'm like we're not gonna get george osborne or jack thorburn yeah right and then all of a sudden we've done all, podcast. Yeah. we stayed in his house yeah. a couple you know with, with you yeah. as well i'm like well, yeah well will he you know and all of a sudden we're doing podcasts with great people like if you if i if if i was running the kind of guest relations we'll call it we'd probably have had just local boys on Mm. We wouldn't have we wouldn't have expanded. See, so I do then, see the benefit to it. So that's what he's good at, and this is what you're, you're good at the technical side. So that's why you work fantastically together. So don't put yourself down, about it. Let him do his forte, mm. and let you do your forte. Yeah, because I, I, I feel like you could advise so many young people, Tom, in life. Yeah, I, know, I feel yeah. like I could yeah. sit here for like well, five you know, hours. Uh, relay in, relay in it from the perspective of Gen Z, somebody who is looking at all of this stuff. Because I think a lot of people get so overwhelmed by it. They see all the forex stuff. They say you've got to be doing this. If you're not investing right now, you're gonna you're gonna be poor forever. It's stressful, and if you're ambitious, I think it comes with ambition. You're like, I want to do this too. And there's so much out there. So many people. So many nineteen year olds telling you to get rich today. It's stressful. I think you know the key message I'm getting from you now is just to slow down and enjoy it you will get there it just takes time you can't mm. you can't do it overnight and i'm trying to yeah just do so stop love. trying to do otherwise you you're going to become a sour narcissistic asshole like i've sometimes been and then you're gonna have people like matthew who get pissed off because i'm always bringing him down for no reason you know it's it's true but it's, it comes from my own insecurity thinking that i'm not worth anything and thinking that I don't deserve this, and thinking that I shouldn't be doing things. So hopefully this is the changing point, brother, and this is where yeah. you start, the yeah. self-belief, and this yeah. is the trajectory that you're going to take now. Yeah, Martha's chuffed. She's <laughs> like, maybe some positivity oh, will come to worry, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow morning I'll have a message, and I'm first thing saying, fuck you. <laughs> so <that's straight laughs> I'm not if, like if you feel negative, text me, or let's have a fucking phone call. Anytime, brother, I'd ring me and let's have a chat. Yeah. Genuinely, I'm not we joking more, about We that. need more people like you, Toby, we really do, because Thanks, the, I bro. think there's, there's too many people trying to... And to be fair, I have been on a bit of an Andrew Tate phase recently. And that's not bad. I'm I'm going to stand my ground and say I, he's taught me a lot. But at no, the same time, what he has done is channeled all of my focus into masculinity, hardness. And I've forgotten my empathy. I've left my empathy and my emotions to one side. And that then has created this... It's only allowed me to channel one part of my personality. Yeah. So that without without the empathy, just the masculinity and hardness is really toxic. I love I love Andrew Tate. I I absolutely love yeah, him. Same. I got a lot of opinions on him. I think he's a fantastic guy, and he and he was he was going to be the one to stand up against the government, and the, he was going to be. A, oh, he still is. Yeah, he's an inspiration to me. He ma massively is. Um, but a dangerous man is someone who is dangerous but has it under control. Oh, that's yeah. the whole point. A was there a warrior in a garden? A warrior in a, it's better to be a, 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 a warrior in a garden than a gardener in a war. Exactly. It's so like, I, I've, been, <coughs> I've been training martial arts for years, I've been a rugby boy, but I, I big people up, I'm, just because it doesn't mean you're the nicest guy, doesn't mean you're not masculine mm. at all. You can, you can be the nicest person in the world and be the hardest. Like, I know the hardest people in the world and they are the nicest guys ever because mm. they have nothing Matthew to says, when prove. You, when you look at people prove. who are into martial arts and stuff, most of them are just very calm, nice people. Look at him. Uh, completely, look yeah. at him. Placid as hell, could snap my neck in, in 30 seconds, you know? Yeah, but he shows himself to be sort of quite. Well, I just think I just think what's the point in showing off to be hard? I mean, if you, if yeah, you... but no, the point of that is to is to try and 
scare people off and try and show people that you're hard because you don't think you are and you probably aren't. It's a weakness that that is trying to be inflated into strength. It's overcompensation. If you know, if you know what, if you know deep down that you could you could smash both our heads in, but you don't need to shout it. You don't need to sit yeah, up and that's it. You know, it's it's being confident in yourself mm. that you don't need to tell anyone because you're mm. confident enough that that is you. Mm. Apart it? from the fact that he's wearing fight project. Yeah, I mean, I've got my t-shirt and <laughs> shout it. Yeah, but that's just that's, oh, that's, yeah. that's 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 completely relevant. But that, you know, I I do like that. I do like that a lot. And I think there's a lot of people who can learn from you, Tom, as well. Thanks. And uh, I don't even know what to say. My Boys, people can learn from brings. you as well. Genuinely, it's not just people can learn from anybody. Yeah. You, you forget that. I can guarantee you people are watching you thinking, and they learn something from you too. Mm. 100%. It's not just people like me. I always hope I, I always hope for that. Like, I don't see the point of me sharing information if if that if I can't translate that into some sort of value. value. Mate, if there's you bound to be there's bound to be people. Person. That's, right. That's right. Say. One person it is all that matters. Yeah. You, have, you have said that as well. That if you can just have one person, that's all you really care about. Because then they accumulate then. If you can help one person, it means that you've identified they can, well they can go gap. on and help someone then. Yeah, and it's just it's just you know? like the village effect then. It's like we, we are now going to be spokespeople for your way of thinking um locally so we'll share what we've learned from you and people will hopefully share that then so it's not just one person it compounds it always mm, does 100 percent. i just I, this has been such a good chat i think i think as Matthew's is wiping his tea as he's been a <laughs> renewed man i, don't no, know, I've enjoyed. I feel like there's so much value to yeah. be taken from you tom and like you know like i said earlier people have the perception of like love island and thinking you're some massive spice boy but at the end of the day you're just <laughs> who think i don't think that i was but i was well, here, spice i haven't yeah. even i don't even know what you looked like back i'll, then, I'll yeah. get it up in a minute now but um yeah, i will overlay a slideshow of the love uh, island <laughs> but i think that, me. i think that a lot of people perceive you a lot different to where you are and it's your perception your reality yeah. i mean you know people perceive you one way but you're probably one of the most genuine down-to-earth people that i've ever met Thank you very so much. I say that, thank you for your time. I appreciate that is, that is it. Any time. And this has been a fucking honour and a privilege to have you. I found you coming down so early as well. I know you came down. Oh, don't stress. I don't even know how long we've been doing this. It's oh, probably, uh, uh, we didn't start till, where's my phone? Hour uh, and a bit. That feels yeah, hour like, and 20. It's, that, 11, it's 11 o'clock. That felt like 20 minutes. It's flown, isn't it? Yeah. That, that was, because that's one of the first podcasts where I've had no prep and I've actually not been worried about running out of a conversation. Um, yesterday was the same as well actually the Jay you're enjoying the, the conversation that's yeah. the whole point yeah but that's why I don't prep anymore I used to prep every question but it, it turned into like a BBC interview yeah I, I, I sort of like to prep I mean I do like yeah but that's important because things. otherwise there's no real introduction you have no way to get momentum no. that's and why that's what, and that's why you're good at that's why yeah. I, I jump in after about 15 minutes because I'm quite good at going deep with questions yeah whereas Matthew is, is, is very interested in setting things up and the introduction and making a really cool sounding introduction well, it's like I, small, I don't it's, do that it's like small details like Stephen Bartlett said, you know, I, I went on to uh, Love Island's YouTube and I found your introduction and brought that back in because I thought yeah. it'd be. I thought That's it'd actually be good. A, I didn't know you. I thought it'd be that. a cool no. thing to do to introduce it you was, the same way they did. No one's done that before. I've I been think, on a multitude of podcasts and no one's done that before at all. I don't see why people wouldn't. I mean, it's it's, it's a no, unique it's sort of thing. Very but clever. I've enjoyed this, Alex. I've, not. I've thoroughly enjoyed this. You've you've taught me a lot. Thomas Powell, have you enjoyed um, this? I have. Boys, this is one of the best podcasts I've ever done. Genuinely, I really. Is enjoyed it because it. it's in person? A lot of people say it's a different vibe in person. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. I've done. Three or four podcasts online, and yeah, you could you don't bond like you do no, at all. Hell no. But mm. no, it's you too as well. You're down to earth. You're genuine boys. You're honest about things. I mean, that, you know? that means a lot. Even though it does make me feel uncomfortable. Too. Welsh. That's the fucking. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's, that's it. Welsh. Yeah. Uh, that's why. That's why we're gonna get flexible with something. I don't have to repeat boys. myself all the time. Oh, mate, hey, like, what? So, sorry, mate. I'll slow down yeah. for you. I'll say it. And again. I've got. A, I've got. I mean, both of us, especially me. I got very thick South Wales accent. And you can speak fluent Welsh. I can't. I can speak fluent Welsh. We can you? Been, yeah, yeah. I'd love to be able to speak Welsh. Can I fuck? No, I, I can't. If someone asks me, I go, oh, I tip them back. Tip so, them back. So, they yeah. think, so they think I can't, yeah. but I can't. No, yeah, I and then they that. go on and speak in Welsh, you know. I'm like, oh, <laughs> sorry, <mate. laughs> Sorry, man, I just tip them back. Yeah. yeah. Um, mm. Right, we'll, we'll, we'll end it there. I wish we could go on forever. Um, but uh, yeah, I've, I've learned so much. Hopefully, the main thing from this is that people, you guys at home, have learned something. Um, Definitely. Yeah, I, you know, so we'll 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 leave it there. Thank um, you, Tom, for your thank, time. Thanks, as well. Tom, again for thank coming you. down so oh, early. Thank you, Adam, for having me on, boys. Uh, we'll do a no, we'll do a round two, and when we when we come up when we yeah. come up north, we'll 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 see if we can do something up there. Do 100%. some gym gym content or something. But, CrossFit. Uh, I wouldn't mind a CrossFit workout. 
Oh, I won't. Yeah. I'll, destroy yes, my, I'll destroy my shoulders, but we'll give it a go. We'll Why not? Go. But thank you, Tom. Thank you ever so much for coming yeah. on the podcast. And we hope that the viewers have taken some inspiration from you and some value. They, I definitely have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So thank you, Mr. Thomas Powell, for your time. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to give us a like and give us a review. And we shall see you in the next episode. Yeah, see you in a bit. <laughs>